The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. I've got to thus saith the Lord that I want to begin with. And I know that I know. I, you don't hear me say that often unless I know that I know God said this. And the thus saith the Lord is that it's, uh, it's, it's time to get your act together emotionally. And the title of this message, of course, is going to be the God emotions. But what God has been speaking to us is that what we've done for years He's saying right now that we're on the we're on the cusp of a harvest, and uh, the thing that has been neglected, and we saw it for traveling twelve years, church to church, uh, quality churches, well taught, solid in their biblical foundation, but what was sorely lacking was their ability to to flow in a lifestyle of forgiveness and repentance, and in addition to that, even understanding how it all works, and. Uh, we want to teach people how to live in the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, even like Jennifer said, she went to a conference once on the fruit of the Spirit. They showed you everything that where it was at in the Bible, uh, but nobody said how to do it. It was kind of mysterious, you know. But uh, the thing that God told us is that hurt people hurt people, and that we're going to have to uh, re-educate the church on the emotions and the role the emotions play. When I was a young Christian and, and a, a lot of my mentors uh, that were evangelical were taught, you can't live by your emotions. And that's a half truth. You can't live by carnal emotions. It, it, you'll get all kinds of weird things you think you're hearing from God when you're all afraid and everything. You can't trust those kind of voices. Um, and hurt people hurt people. Wherever you're emotionally damaged, you have the tendency to project onto other people. It's like you're wrapped in barbed wire and you come in contact with people, you'll stick them whether you intended to or not. Hurt people hurt people, but healed people can heal people. And by healed people, I mean that it's the Jesus in you that does the healing, but he can work through you because the barbed wire is not there. And um, the uh, thing that God showed us so much so is uh, I like the way surgeons were trained. See one, do one, teach one. That really should be uh, Christian mentoring. That really should be Christian discipleship, shouldn't it? It's not just about learning the information. It's about see one, do one. I don't, I don't, want, a, I don't want a surgeon personally that's done this. For, he's seen it one time and he's going to work on me. I would want a little bit of practice. <laughs> practice makes permanent. Practice makes, uh, some say perfect, but I say permanent in the kingdom of God. It advances the cause of God. Now, um, why would you not want to help somebody? Well, the only thing I've ever run into is they didn't know how. And, but once God shows you that these God tools are available. And you know what's funny? The message actually used that expression uh, early on when we would teach the modules. Um, and in 2 Corinthians 10, verses 4 and 5, most people know it from the King James Version as the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, arguments, and reasonings that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So there's thinking strongholds that exalts itself against what the word says. It's contrary to the word. All right. But listen to this in the message. And it's a paraphrase, of course, but we use our powerful God tools. That same verse. Fitting, fitting. This, this is the mechanical part. Fitting every loose thought, emotion, and impulse. That's mind, will, and emotions. What we want to see the church do is walk in a lifestyle to where those three are combined. And 
I was taught, oh, you got to renew the mind, renew the mind, renew the mind, renew the mind. And it was always mind, 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 mind. But guess what? In the Bible, that's in the Greek, that's N-O-U-S, nous, mindset. There will not be true forgiveness, true repentance, unless the mind, the will, and the emotions have all been submitted to the Lordship of Jesus. You can't change your mind. Well, I mean, I can change my mind. I can change my mind every 10 seconds. It doesn't, that's not repentance. <laughs> but when the mindset is changed and you are now moving in another direction as a lifestyle, forgiveness and repentance has to be something that bears fruit. Now, why wouldn't we want to help people? Well, we saw a lot of people that they needed help themselves first. But once they received help themselves, what was our favorite expression when we travel? Whoa, I haven't really arrived yet, but I'm going to start in my family and I'm going to start teaching them this. I haven't, I'm not complete yet. I haven't arrived. That's the kind of proper Christian attitude everyone should have. And uh, we use these powerful God tools to fit loose thoughts, emotions, and impulse into a structure of a life that's shaped by Jesus. Does that make sense? I want my mind, will, and emotions to be subjected to Jesus, to the spirit, the real experience of him. And here's the part that uh, I really wanted to emphasize. Our tools are ready and at hand. You are without excuse. Our tools are ready and at hand. Where are they? The Jesus in you. So you can't say, I, I don't know what to do. I can't help somebody because I don't know where they're at. I don't know. It says, our tools are ready and at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction so that we can build lives of obedience unto maturity. And we teach very strongly that you learn as a Christian to mature, to deal with this between you and God. You don't always need somebody. However, on the other hand, some of the great success stories we saw when we traveled church to church were the people who have done everything by themselves, never were never vulnerable to anybody else, and they don't get the victory because confess your faults one to another that you might be healed. You know who that one's for? That's for the self-independent person who doesn't want to be vulnerable, doesn't want to reveal anything, doesn't want anybody, I don't need anybody, just me and God, just me and God. Yeah, I'd like to see more of that, just me and God. But you also have to know that the blessing's in the cluster. And unless you can relate one to one another, you're not ready for corporate life all by yourself. And you are not the church. <laughs> I see this all the time on Facebook. I don't need to go to church. I am the church. No, you are, unless you have multiple personalities, <laughs> you cannot have a corporate anointing by yourself. All right? Oh. So. But I'm telling you what, what, where you want to see rapid results, rapid results, is the person that will apply the effort to deal with their toxic emotions. And God told us from the time I was a baby Christian, and so this is what we're about, by the way. You may, you may be about something else uh, in, in your obedience to God, but God said, I've called you, Dennis, with gifts of healings. And these gifts of healings are first and foremost emotional. Because listen to this. Some people won't like this. The head people won't like this. But you cannot be more spiritually mature. What did I say? Spiritually mature. You cannot be more spiritually mature than your emotions allow you. I know we're, head, we're a head people because that's the way we live most of our life. And we've exalted it, even even in our teaching. But perfect love casts out fear. <laughs> life and death are in the power of the tongue. These are all the things that I was, I was fashioned with uh, uh, teachings. I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds of hours I put in in the early days learning faith and hope and love and the gifts of the Spirit. And in every single emphasis, it was the words so we confess the words, we declare the words, we decree the words. That is all well and good, but the source better be right or you're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I exaggerate it, but 
this is what I could discern when we were dealing with Christians. They, they knew the right answers. So they go, ah, ah, perfect love, cast out fear. Ah, perfect love, cast out fear. What, do, what are they manifesting while they're saying the right answer? The problem. Now, traditionally in the church, they found out that if you say it enough, you just might get tired and surrender and yield to it, <laughs> get rid of the fear, and then form a theology that it takes a great deal of confession and, and declaration over and over and over again until that happens. Well, you say, but it works. I've had it work. Well, you take a covered wagon to California, but I take a plane. So uh, the arguments of what works doesn't impress me. What, what impresses me is rapid change for believers to come into maturity. Uh, it, it's just amazing some of the newbies that one, one tiny session and they were multiplying uh, healing to other people. One session. And then uh, on the online schools, the same thing. Just taking it online and learning and wanting to help people. The, the most obvious one is when it works, when something works. Like Jennifer used to say, I don't want a dead end formulas you know this works we're going to do this but god said that full stature was the initial ministry and uh and still is full stature is maturity you cannot have biblical spiritual maturity without dealing with the emotions mind will and emotions all three must be dealt with you can't just have the right answers. You see what I'm saying? That can be a deception. Thank God you've got the right answers. That means you've read your Bible <laughs> because it has to be scriptural, but it has to be all three, mind, will, and emotions. And God says, this, is, this was my mandate and it still is. He says that you are going to, your mandate, Dennis, uh, this is before Jennifer, which by the way, this is our anniversary month, 25 years. And, uh, Silver redemption. I'm getting better every day, thanks to Jennifer. Um, but in, uh, I, I'm supposed to model the emotional aspect of having the fruit of the Spirit expressed. It's kind of like Jason said the other day. Partaking doesn't just mean drinking it in. Partaking means to be able to express it. And the first thing the Lord did to me as a baby Christian was said, I'm going to send you to the school of the Spirit, you emotional man, you. And, I, and I'm going to take you to the school of the Spirit, but you're, what you're going to learn uh, in this school is that anything that I teach you, anything from the Scriptures that is revelation to you, as I reveal it to you, I'm going to require you to, to cultivate it. I wonder how many times we've read the right answers but never really cultivated to where we owned it. And then God says, and at the end, if you think you've cultivated it, I'm gonna, I want you to test yourself to see, is there fruit? And you know, uh, practicing the presence of God is more real to me than the world around me. And that can be for everybody, but practice takes time. When Jennifer and I got married, the first thing she says, this really works. And she got a few emotional healings to where she could think about it a week later, close her eyes, think about it, and it was erased in the gut. It was peace in the gut, even though it was a horrific memory. When the, Jesus takes the pain and the sorrow away, that is a testimony. And it's not a testimony until the pain is gone. He alone can take your pain, your sorrow. But Jennifer would be like this now. Uh, God taught me through discerning of human spirit most of this. My, my strength is always to discern the human spirit, and that means what's flavoring it at any given time. And uh, one time we were in that car, and I'll never forget that. All of a sudden, the car fills with anxiety, but nobody's talking. And I'm going, I feel like I can't. Jennifer? <laughs> What are you thinking right now? And she, I just want to know how we're going to go to Connecticut and still, it's all the furniture. And I, how are we going to get that furniture unloading? Yeah. I said, Do you think that's God inquiring? No. And then she would drop down and get her peace back. 
And God took care of it miraculously, didn't he? All those things that you were anxious about, he took care of it literally. He says, first things first, God sent us to Connecticut to do ministry. Let's just go do the ministry and let those other things take care of themselves when we get back. We can't do it while we're gone. Oh, but she needed more than the right answer. She needed peace. So, but we're supposed to model it, minister it, and mature the saints. That's really our mandate. To make, uh, to me, God said it was kind of like a John the Baptist ministry, like an Elijah ministry. He said, as a baby Christian, he says, you're going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And he used Luke 117, which is a little different. The turning of the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the, which means to soften a man's heart like childlikeness would be nice application. Turning the hearts of the fathers toward the children, being tender-hearted toward them, and at the same time, turning the rebellious or the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. So the turning of the younger people need to know that you're, you're walking in carnality, you're walking in disobedience. Hear the word of the Lord. Return to God, he'll return to you. Um, now, so these gifts of healings, and you know, uh, people that have operated in gifts of healings um, ours is more hidden because it's uh, the, some of the greatest miracles were done one-on-one -on -one privately. You know, altar ministry you're a little bit limited because you don't necessarily it doesn't necessarily need to be everybody else's business, does it? Um, but we saw success in both altar ministry and one-on-one. -on -one. But the beauty of it is it's always, I always say, oh, I wish there was a camera. Of course, if I say that out loud, no one will ever do a one-on-one. -on -one. I wish there was a camera because it, it was so glorious. Jennifer saw for the first time someone get filled. You know what I mean by filled? Not just filled with the Spirit uh, initially, but like, you know, uh, God, I, I think I heal all that rejection, and I just release rejection and cry, and the rejection goes away. They get peace with God. And they say, all that you needed and never received, get it directly from God right now. And the room would flood with the presence of God, and, and they would be receiving, they'd be filled. On your little, our little uh, blue cards, it's uh, first feel forgive for about 80% of all ministry. Is that simple? Because we can do it with children. But then there's also fact and fill when there's a stronghold that shouts at the time of your emotional healing. You deal with the stronghold, but then you allow yourself to be filled with the Spirit of God with the real answer, the scriptural answer, and to where it's no longer poetry, but he writes it on the tablet of your heart. And that means you own it, not in your head. You own it experientially, and you live it out, and it's an expression. Fruit. So remember... You can't be more spiritually mature than your emotions allow. And uh, I just feel like God said that this is a thus saith the Lord now. We've done this our whole life. But he's saying, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because there's going to be an influx of people from the culture. A culture that is, uh, in to a large degree, brainwashed them. And they're going to need not education. They're going to need re-education. And it was the same reason we wrote the book on the supernatural blueprint with the Didache, it was like, we're going to be doing what in the early church, before there was a New Testament, Jesus had 12 apostles. Did he not? Before there was a New Testament, all they had was the Old Testament and what they heard Jesus say, and that's what they taught the Gentiles before there was a New Testament. I don't know if that got your curiosity, but it got mine, because that, to me, that's foundationally solid Christianity. And guess what? We discovered there's a Didache. It's not scripture, but the Didache is an outline of the way they taught these Gentiles before there was a New Testament. They taught them, this is what Jesus said to us. You know, interesting, because you can hear, you can hear what later would be scripture, even if it wasn't scripture. You know, like, Love God with all your heart and your neighbors. Your, you, you would have known that from the Old Testament, really. And there was so much of that. But God was saying, I'm telling you, Dennis, this is the time. You're training and equipping. I'm not interested in evangelizing. There's evangelists that do that. You catch them, we'll clean them. <laughs> is their attitude. Because what they need is re-educated into, uh, just like in the Didache. It was so funny. 
after a period of training, when they felt there was a real relationship, they would call them my child, sons and daughters. The mentors would call them my child. But that took, it took a two-way relationship there. Not someone just trying to see what they can get out of it, but it was a two-way relationship to where they were submitting to the learning. And the rabbis at that time and uh, the, uh, the apostolic teachers uh, would say, your father, now this is for Gentiles. Now remember, these Gentiles probably had unsafe families, probably were worshiping 10 gods, who knows. But it says, your earthly father can bring you into this world. Pay attention to this, because this is something that's been neglected. But your spiritual fathers and your mentors can teach you how to live in this world. My father brought me into this world. But I'll tell you what, it was me, after many years, that led my own father and got him healed up. I'm glad I didn't wait for him and demand from him to do what he should do as a father. Better let that go. You be the best person you can be, and God will send the right people into your life. The blessing is in the cluster. Where are you connected? Who Can you call someone up? Even the people that are connected with me know that they can call me. I don't care if they live in Colorado or, or Oklahoma or Maine. We have a relationship. And God's looking for that relationship to be going through the same three stages. Of course, almost everybody in this small congregation uh, is, has done phone coaching, <laughs> which you're taking people from around the world and walking them through the simple thing. That was my responsibility, and that is my gifting. And it's as easy as breathing for me to see emotional healing. It's as easy as breathing. But it's a quiet, off-to-the-side ministry because the best is done one-on-one. -on -one. However, for many years, I think it was the first 20 years I was a Christian, I did it all by myself to my first church. I did one-on-one -on -one with every one of 250 people in my church and outside of the church. Because there was a people were calling from outside. I hear this, and you know, I saw so and so's life, and they were a mess, and now they're better. <laughs> Which, by the way, is a far greater testimony than I fell down and got ministry. Because <laughs> some of them get back up, and they're the same person they were when they fell down. All right. If they, by the way, you ever get slain in the spirit, and you know, it's happened here a lot, when you fall down, stay down and enjoy it. <laughs> say, Jesus, do to me whatever it is you want to do. Don't jump up and say, let's do that again. <laughs> we had one lady, she used to run around in a circle, and people would go down, and she would come back around. Over, All she wanted to do was fall down. The goal is not falling down. The goal is a surrendering to the Lord Jesus on the inside. We have a mandate, Kingdom Life Church, so you can do this with us or you don't have to, uh, but this is what God says. Thus saith the Lord, this is your mandate, this is your flavor, this is your ministry. There's all kinds of ministries. This is your ministry to help people and to help them where it really matters because you can do all kinds of things to help people that are non-redemptive. But God's saying, they cannot be more spiritually mature than their emotions allow. Learn how to help them deal with those runaway emotions. And only Jesus can take toxic emotions. Let's put Jesus out of the picture for a minute. What can you do? You better go get some advice and probably medicated. And thank God that there are people who are medicated who are still alive today that might have not been. So I'm not knocking it. So if I say, but does that work? Hey, don't argue with me about something works. I don't really care. But if something's faster and better and more efficient, I want that. I don't care that you can take a covered wagon to California. I'm not going that way. My back would hurt. All right. If I go to California, I'm going on a plane. I'm not even driving. That's be too hard. But does it work? Could I take a covered cat or wagon? Does a car get you to cat? Yeah, I don't want those silly arguments. All I've seen is God is expediting and he's bringing quick recovery to the whosoever will learn and listen and help people. Now, that was my introduction. <laughs> but the 
we saw the neglect of the emotional area. And the only truth I heard over and over again, you can't live by your feelings, which means I can't live by hurt, fear, lust, anger, guilt, shame. Of course not. Those are like bad kids making you run off and do something contrary to the word of God. But Romans 14, 17, I think Jason covered this in his message. Romans 14, 17 is the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. Righteousness is love in action. So the kingdom of God is love, joy, peace. God emotion. God has emotion. God is an emotional God. God is love. He doesn't just have some love. He is love. It's his nature. It's his essence. So even the gifts of the Spirit, if love's not behind it, you don't necessarily mature. Have you ever heard of someone that was gifted and not very mature? A little embarrassing in private as to how they behave? Because those gifts are there, but really you were meant to show the love. I, I, I like listening to, uh, 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 it's always got notes, so I feel comfortable with that. I like notes too, but but I never stick with them. I don't know what all of them. But uh, I like Johnny Enlow's prophecy, because he's redemptive. I like that. If I want all bad stuff, I just turn on the news. <laughs> I, it's not hard. And, and some of the prophecy is almost like, they used to make fun of it years ago, and it was kind of like you were not supposed to despise prophecies. But when you hear something like, it just dropped into my spirit, tomorrow is Monday. You know, I, that's an exaggeration, but I'm not really that really into that. But tell me something that is redemptive and timely and something that reveals the heart of God. Jennifer wrote, and she had a vision and wrote a book on uh, the, um, what was the name of that one ultimately? It was like a tale of two cities. It was a tale of two kingdoms. It's like, here's what God is doing at any time in history. I don't care how bad it is historically, how evil was doing something, God was always doing something. He didn't go on vacation. He wasn't on a sabbatical. And he's definitely not an amnesiac. And I like to throw that in because when we travel, we used to hear people go, well, I forgive and forget. Explain forget. If you think you forgot in your head, you're lying. You didn't forget in your head. The only legitimate forget is when Jesus washes it from the emotional center of your heart and you have peace. When you can remember something traumatic with peace in the gut, you have a testimony. <laughs> Otherwise, it's coping. And you don't have to be a Christian to co learn to cope. And thank God some people cope. And coping might work. <laughs> I'm not impressed. <laughs> now, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy, or love, joy, and peace. Um, God made you a thinking, feeling, choosing being. He made you three parts, to think, to feel, and to choose. Why wouldn't he, why would he give you the emotions if they can be ignored by the church? Just ignore them. Don't pay any attention to them. Just suppress stuff. Mm -hmm. When we did a missions trip in France, they were all laughing because I was using English slang and I was talking about not stuffing. Don't stuff. And they were all looking at each other, the anointing kind of, and they were picturing stuffing a sausage. <laughs> putting feathers in a pillow. And I'm like, what is he talking about? Then we said, uh, how do you say it in French? Abandonné. Abandonné. Surrender. And the power of God flooded the room. <laughs> and surrender, yield. I don't know what word you use, but you need to let go and let God be in charge, right? And, and until you learn how to do that experientially, it's just a concept. Now, the... Before Adam sinned, just think, before Adam sinned, before he sinned, walking in the garden, God gave you emotions. The only emotions he knew was love, joy, and peace, patience, kindness, goodness. And they're all love, but they express themselves differently. He only knew the fruit of the Spirit, 
as an experience in the day-to-day -day routine. Not even when you were doing anything important. You just enjoyed the peace of God. I'm telling you what, we're going to teach you how to practice the presence of God. And we're going to get some response from this video because God said the time is now. And you're going to see a lot of hurting people. And, and uh, Dennis, uh, don't get weary. <laughs> so that was kind of a semi-warning in there for me. But I love it. I love it because it's as easy as breathing. But what I loved the best was after many years of doing, being the only one that did it in my church, I married Jennifer 25 years ago, and she goes, what do you mean you're the only one that does this? Teach me. Thank God for Jennifer because then she broke it down into those little blue cards and all these little, these, uh, the 60 day challenges named after Jennifer. Her mentor said, uh, uh, Pastor Clark, uh, I know you want to marry Jennifer and you're serious, but you're a pastor. And, oh, well, she's a brilliant young lady, but she's too emotionally damaged to ever amount to anything. Because she was a school uh, psychologist, uh, dean of a Bible college, and a missionary. And her theology was based on all the failures she saw. If you're not pretty well adjusted when you get saved, you only go so far. Don't ever buy into that. I was a baby Christian and people were referring people to me because they were seeing results. I formed my theology on, hey, anybody can get squared away if they apply effort. Not everybody will apply effort because it does require vulnerability. And that scares people. But without it, you will never make it. Because by yourself, if you don't surround yourself with healthy people, you're left, you're left to whatever passes through that brain, whatever walks through. And in that darkness, that's where the roaches and the creepy things live, in the darkness. And so don't expect a good result. Now, it doesn't mean you have to throw your life open to everybody, but you better have be around healthy people to where you can see the change in their life. Because to me, trust is earned. And forgiveness is not reconciliation. I wouldn't reconcile with everybody that I've forgiven. They'd have to earn that trust back for a healthy relationship. But the, the importance is, is if, if, if they were created to be conduits of the love of God. You need those emotions because they're supposed to have the fruit of the Spirit flowing through it. That's why he gave them to you. Don't you want to use what you've got? <laughs> Because most of them are all clogged up with hurt, fear, lust, anger, guilt, shame. Well, that's the way it is. You know what was interesting? Jonathan Edwards. And those of you that know your uh, Christian history a little bit, uh, Jonathan Edwards had a statement that really blew Jennifer away when we first got married. He says, the emotions are the gateway to knowing God. Well, wow. oh, wait a minute. We are taught don't pay attention to those emotions. Where are you coming from, Jonathan? You know what he saw? He saw revival break out, and he saw the people that wept with repentance. He saw the people that, that cried, had tears flowing down their eyes. And he saw that later they were the most changed. And the ones that were in their head that didn't, oh, I don't feel anything. That's, that's, that's all new age. Oh, that's another thing. That's my pet, pet phrase. You accuse something of new age when, you, when it, the real problem is you don't know the Holy Spirit. If you don't know the Holy Spirit, don't be calling the Holy Spirit the devil just because you don't know any better. Why don't you seek, search the matter out? You know how many evangelicals got filled with the Holy Spirit because they simply said, mm, I don't know if that's God or not, but I'm, if God, if that's you, I'll give it a shot. That's wisdom. Search, wisdom searches out the matter. Now, um, the, if the emotions are the gateway to knowing God, we experience the God emotions. Uh, we know uh, traditionally as the fruit of the Spirit. Um, John 15, though, here's, here's a goal of Full Stature Ministries. Is I know everybody gets excited when they learn to drop down and get their first emotional healing. And people that were like Jennifer were a little bit like a yo-yo at first, right? Oh, that feels so good. I feel the peace. But what about if I go, oh, I feel the peace. Well, what about... <laughs> Up and down. Okay. The goal of John 15 for a real Christian is how to abide in the vine, not up and down, not attach and detach. It's a death to the independent life. It's a death to being independent, and it is a we mentality instead of a 
me mentality. And that's why he spoke, I speak to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. He wasn't talking about chronological age. Little children, he was talking about immature Christians. I speak to you, young men. Ah, you've learned some things here, and the Word of God abides in you, and you've overcome the wicked one. In other words, you've got a taste of victory. And how can you tell that he's speaking to young men? How do you know if you're even a young man or a young woman? People will go to you for help. I've never seen people say, oh, I'm a mess. I'm going to go to this depressed person down the street and see if they can help me out. Hmm? John 15, abide in the vine and you'll bear fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is the only gift we can give to God. Wait a minute. It's the only gift we can give to God? Yeah. He gave... He gives you gifts, but the only you can't give the fruit of the Spirit unless you got it from Him. We love because He first loved us. So the only thing you can really give to God is what is His. That requires a relationship. Oh my goodness, there is that relationship word again. Oh man, this guy, get off that relationship thing. The power of peace. Forgiveness is the God tool to maintain that peace with God. Uh, I wish more people bought our book on the supernatural power of peace because peace doesn't sound like an exciting subject, but if you don't have it, it, there's people that would give their life savings to have a moment of peace. They've lived in that much low-grade anxiety 24-7. Peace is a commodity. Peace is a solution. In this church, if you don't know the answer, just say, peace or forgiveness, and you're probably right. Because what we saw was in the re-educating of the, of, of, the, of the human heart, the heart of the matter is always a matter of the heart. It's always got to deal with the emotion. I don't care how well you know scripture. Some of the most hurting people I've seen know scripture, but they don't know how to deal with the emotion behind it. Now, our mandate is to love. And it's only one fruit. That's why the kingdom is love, joy, peace, really. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, Romans 14, 17. Now, there's one fruit. I like this kind of just to give us an idea. In Galatians 5, 22, when it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Um, it's one fruit. Joy, picture this. When you feel the joy, that's love rejoicing. You feel an effervescence. You feel it bubble up. When I discipled Jennifer, we would pray, and I'd get her to release all of the interfering emotion, receive forgiveness, get your peace back. There it is right now. It's coming in this room right now. You got your peace. Now say, okay, peace is nice, but I want to go deeper, and I release. Just like I'm sitting in a chair, but the bottom falls out and I relax, and joy will invariably rise up. So you can tap into the fruit of the Spirit. Remember John Paul Jackson's uh, business manager told us, he said, you're, you're not a counselor, you're restoring truth that's been lost to the church for decades. Oh, 2,000 years. And, and he says, because I was calling myself, well, I'm just an itinerant preacher. And he said, no, don't, he said, don't do that. He said, because you're restoring truths that have been lost. Right there in the scriptures, I mean, it's not like it's not there. It's right there, but it's just, there's, you can't turn your Bible and not find the word peace. And they say, but you say drop down. Drop down throughout the New Testament is put on and do all to sink into in order to be clothed. Let the peace of God guard your heart and your mind. But you have to go down before it goes up, experientially. Now, joy is love rejoicing. Peace, and oh, if you get a hold of this, it's not just passive. Peace is love resting, but resting in the place of ruling. There's kind of a double, a double application there. Let the peace of God rule. 
It's both militant and it's restful. But it's like a king sitting on his throne. He's resting, but he's ruling. He issues, he issues the scepter, and I'll tell you what, it's life or death. Peace is love resting and ruling. Patience is love enduring. And the way the Lord taught me that one was to practice the presence of God on a day-to-day routine of life means circumstances and people. There can be crazy people, crazy circumstances, right? That's life. But in the midst of it, that, that what he was saying was patience was down here in the gut, the door of the heart. And you got to know this is the door of the heart, not here. <laughs> Talk about re-education. You open the door of your heart and hold it open, which peace then guards your heart and your mind, but I'm not shutting down. Hope deferred means I shut the door. It'll make you sick. And most physical ailments, and this is what we saw traveling, we prayed emotional healing in every church we went to and saw dramatic results, and periodically a physical healing would have emerged that we never prayed for. Some of your emotional issues are contributing to your physical condition. God wants you to prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. That's mind, will, and emotions got to prosper. And Jennifer's biology of belief, uh, he's basically stated, your, your biology is a product of your belief system over a period of years. And here's something that this is, I'm militant for this, so don't ever come to this church or be part of this ministry if you're afraid of this, all right? You have to forgive yourself. I'm tired of watching people go down the tubes and it ain't the devil. It's them. We have found the enemy. It is you judging yourself. Stop it. Why would I say stop it? Because you're the only one that can stop it. I can't do it for you. Come here. I'll wave my hand over you, and you'll get slain in the spirit, and you'll be all better. Not if your will is like, I don't like me, and I don't ever like me, and it's just the way I am. You're not going to change. Stop it. Who was that that comedian? Bob. Bob Newhart used to do that. He said, I will counsel anybody for five bucks. Anybody. And they hand them five bucks. He goes, stop it. (laughs) And every once in a while, he said, I get someone that comes back and gets in my face and says, yeah, it didn't work. You don't understand. I'm afraid of being in closed places. And and I don't and and, and you don't understand. You're not even dealing with my issue. You just tell me to stop it. And he goes, all right, another five bucks. I'll heal that. Stop it or I'll put you in a box. (laughs) All right. Do we have to do that? We shouldn't have to do that, right? But our mandate is to love. But we need to know that there's love resting and ruling. There's love that's patiently holding the heart open, regardless of crazy people and circumstances. Peace really will guard your heart and it will speak health to your physical body. Don't you want to be healthy physically? Gee, kindness is love, acts of love. But you know, it's kind of like what Watchman Nee used to say. If the only thing you know to do is is, uh, an aspirin, and that's your solution, that perhaps you ought to inquire of God to find out more solutions. And... We had a marketing genius that came to us years ago, and he goes, I just realized something. You know, in marketing, you're looking for what percentage of the population could you minister to? He said, you got the whole church (laughs) if they would listen, because they all need sanctified. They all need to grow. It's a mandate to mature. It's not an option. You can stay a child. They never last long in our church, though, do they? We call them adult lessons. (laughs) <laughs> I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I mean that from a biblical way. I speak to you, little children. Or by reason of time, you ought to be teachers, and instead, 
you still need the fundamentals. Adult adolescence. You might be in an adult body, but you're an adolescent spiritually. I speak to you little children, I speak to you young men, and I speak to you fathers. I want mature mothers and fathers. Full stature means mature. That's my mandate. This will not be a seeker-friendly type church that gives you milk only. There's plenty of places for that, to get the milk. Get the milk of the word and love the milk of the word. But for heaven's sakes, get, get to the point where you can start chewing. Did you ever see, actually, it's kind of sad. You ever seen a child growing up that they're trying to go from milk to solid food and they don't want to chew because it's too much effort? <laughs> I had to counsel a lady in my first church with that. Well, any child, they don't want to chew. It's hard. I'm going, oh, yeah, yeah, I, got I can find them in church anywhere. People who don't want to chew. <laughs> The power of peace, God is love. Goodness is love motivating. Faith is love trusting. See, it makes me smile. I feel the joy on, on trusting. For some people, trust is like a scary word. But here's the way I see it. This is the way it is in the Bible. Trust in the Lord. I don't know about all the crazy people. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. That's mind, will, and emotions. Trust in the Lord. Yield, surrender to the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on this. Look, at there's a built-in warning in there because he knows our carnal. It's going to run here and have questions. Did you know that the, the early... Uh, rabbis, when they send their children to school, they did not ask them, what did you learn today? That's kind of what we do, right? When they come home, did you learn anything today in school? <coughs> they said, they did the opposite. They said, did you ask any good questions? Because that would have been, if you asked a good question, that got your mentor's attention for one thing, and it showed that you, you went beyond just knowing the right answers. You give them good questions. And that, well, that was Jesus' teaching. They would ask him a question, he'd answer with a question. <laughs> Beautiful rabbinic style of teaching. You should be that way. How come you don't ask me more questions? What's wrong with you people? <laughs> oh no, I just set myself up for emails. Okay. <laughs> By the way, I don't do instant messenger on Facebook. We post the, the videos, but I don't I don't have time for everybody from around the world saying, Hi, call me. <laughs> no, probably not. But anyway. All right. Now I wanna I wanna close with this. I didn't get very far. That introduction was just too long. I don't know. But how many know the scripture, put off the old man, put on the new? Put off. Well, we used a little, a little system to help you remember. And um, off, O-F-F, -F, teaches you in reality how to walk in the spirit. Not just get an emotional healing how to walk in the Spirit. And what's interesting is when you got born again, you opened, oh, you opened your heart, whether you knew you did it or not. If you had an assurance of your salvation, you opened your heart. Mm -hmm. Open, Jesus, come in. Forgive me of my sin and cleanse me. Forgiveness, F, open, forgive, what, how do you know if you're really saved? Fruit, peace, peace with God. That's your assurance. OFF, -F, open, receive forgiveness, fruit, OFF. -F. Then Colossians 2 6 comes along, and this is so we teach both. We're going to teach people how to do that properly and get the emotions that are toxic out of the way. That's step one. The better part is how to abide how to practice full stature, how to mature. O-F-F. -F. As you have received him, so walk. 
So what does that tell you? The same way and the same supernatural exchange of getting saved was the same way you were meant to walk in the Spirit. How do you walk in the Spirit? You stay open to God. You walk in a forgiveness lifestyle. You know, and if you're tempted, that's not sin. If you're tempted, you go back to peace. I'm not going to go there. Oh, donuts are calling me. Mm, no, draw, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. I love that part. You turn to him and his strength grabs a hold of you. Or, or the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh will draw your bucket up and you get up in your hand. Yes, two dozen. <laughs> And I think that I'm getting convicted. I receive forgiveness. I don't need two dozen donuts. And as I draw back to God, he draws back to me and strengthens me. And his peace will rule and guard my heart and my mind. Three donuts, that's okay. I got a, I got a, I got a peace about that. Uh, it's up to you to discern. All right. Open. The door of the heart by yielding. I stand at the door and knock, says Jesus, right? We experience God's forgiveness. He's delivered me from the power of darkness and conveyed us, conveyed us. There's a transfer here taking place, a transaction and a translation. And he's translated us uh, into the kingdom of the son of his love. What do we say the kingdom was? Love, joy, peace. The kingdom of the son of his love is where we got translated. You had peace with God when you got saved. If you didn't have peace with God, you, you were religious and you were sincere perhaps, but you're not saved. You're not born again until you have an assurance of your salvation. And that's in the gut. He himself is your peace, but you need peace with God. You need to reconcile and have peace with God. You see where peace and forgiveness, if you really learn the simplicity of the love message where the rubber meets the road. Peace and forgiveness is the love message. Did you hear something I don't hear anybody preach? John 20 and Luke 24. When Jesus tells the church what to do, it says, go preach the forgiveness of sin. How complicated is that? But don't go preaching the forgiveness of sin if you can't forgive. That's a different gospel, isn't it? That's hypocrisy. You're the most forgiven people on the face of the earth. You should be the most forgiving people on the face of the earth. How come we don't hear that, though? I mean, it's right there in the scriptures. John 20, Luke 24. Jesus said, go preach the forgiveness of sin. Go preach the remission of sin. Go preach it. Their sins are forgiven. Go preach it. Tell them what a wonderful gift that is. And then we have Christians going, I'll never forgive so-and-so for what they did to me. Well, you don't understand. Oh, that, usually when they start out with that, you're not going to get through because they're in, they're in uh, revenge mode or I want to hurt them back. Yeah. You don't understand what I've been through. Well, tell that to Jesus. Tell that to Jesus. He doesn't understand what you've been through. Uh-oh. I don't know if anybody's got enough courage for that one. Open by yielding your will. That's how you walk in the Spirit. But you change the entire mindset. True repentance. Moving in a new direction. Walking in the Spirit, not in the lust of the flesh pride of life when you're walking in a new direction it requires that is a repentance lifestyle that's actually a change of clothes you could say repentance is a change of clothes you put off the old you put on the new how did you put on what does put on mean in the bible it means drop down to sink into in order to be clothed so you're watching by video and you want to you want to partner with us in this ministry this is what you need to learn because the whole church needs it. There's no one that doesn't need that. No one. 
And what good is if I feed the poor and have not that love? What good is that? God's looking for a mandate, and he gave it to me. And so this is, the, this is the clearly day one of a message that he made very clear to me. And I said, well, I thought I'd been doing this my whole life. And God says, yeah, but now's the time. You need to decree and declare that this is the time that that's going to start taking place. And people that won't get healed, people that will run from God, that's their, their problem. I was wounded in the church. Sorry. You're going to stand accountable for the things that you called New Age that was really Holy Spirit, and you're going to stand accountable for I was wounded in the church and thinking that's an excuse. If you didn't get wounded in the church, you got wounded in the world. What's the difference? I want to teach you how to deal with those wounds and get healed. Because healed people can heal people. Hurt people don't do anything except poke other people with their hurt. Yeah, I almost feel, I can almost understand the Apostle Paul when he said, I don't, I don't want to brag, but here's what's, here's what's taking. I don't want to brag, but you know what? This is as easy as breathing. If you would take the time to learn to do this, you could help yourself and other people. What part of you does not want to? I don't understand that. I have no place to put that. Open, forgive, fruit. We've got, we've got uh, a, a person in this room that uh, I just met, and I am radically impressed with their ability to do what we're talking about. A newbie. So, what do you think of that? And there's people that have called from out of state and said, this works. I don't know why it works, <laughs> but it works. I want that to be your battle cry. You don't have to have all the answers. All you got to do is be willing to help people and get them delivered. I told you, and the times that I felt like I'm not going to help you, you need to do this yourself, there's a place for that too. I did that with my Harvard disciple. He called up, Denny, there's this woman. And she's roaring like a lion. What do I do? Come. Come and do it. I go, nope, you do it. The next day he was my writer to when I worked in the factory. He picked me up and he stood on my front porch and he had a half, half an Alka-Seltzer in his mouth. And it was, Dennis, help me, Dennis, help me. <laughs> I call that revenge. He didn't need ministry. He wanted to get even because I didn't help him with the roaring lion lady. <laughs> so, Father, we just ask you to redeem the time as you've told me. And I just pray for these people that are listening by video. Contact us. Contact us. I don't care where you're at in the world. Contact us because I'm getting more and more reports of people. We have a little card that Rebecca puts in, and someone orders this material. When they order our material and they order like 10 of something, what does that tell you? They're training other people. You call me. First call Rebecca. <laughs> She's got the church phone, not me. Call her, and I will troubleshoot with anybody that's actually helping other people. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, Forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit Forgive123.com.